Hey there traders, thanks for joining me for this free video from the stockbandit.com. I'm sure glad that you are able to make it. So uh, let's take a look here at the indices as just part of the weekend routine as we get ready for a brand new week of trading. We've got to take a look at where the market is, what's the overall behavior of the major averages because we know that's going to have the biggest influence on how individual stocks move. So for uh, the NASDAQ last week, you know, we finished a little bit higher, about 12 and a half points. Uh, we did mark new highs. Uh, in the early portion of the week, but that really never did produce the accelerated move higher, it, it, meaning that uh, new highs are not really inspiring a lot of heavy buying. People are not really chasing momentum in the same manner as they are aggressively buying every, every little minor pullback. And so dips have been bought aggressively of late, even though the pace of this rally has really flattened out here over the past several weeks especially compared to uh, the initial portion of this 10 plus week uptrend channel. So for the NASDAQ, we're now hugging this lower trend line, which if that does get broken, does not mean the trend has changed. All it, mean is, all it means is that the pace of the trend has changed. So remember, these uptrend channel lines are going to continue higher at the same rate. Even if price continues to move higher but starts drifting a little bit more sideways, uh, we're going to get that lower channel line break. And it's just a reminder to us that these channels don't last forever. It will be a signal to us that maybe this market is starting to show some fatigue, uh, which who could blame it after such a sizable run. Uh, and it'll just definitely bring to mind the importance of locating some new levels to, to fixate on. So for the NASDAQ, this lower trend line currently stands around 29.72. We've got the high up here at 3,000 that was set on Wednesday intraday. Then we've got this little one month yellow uptrend line, which I just covered over in red, but uh, this yellow trend line right here is around the uh, 29.45 level. So some levels to watch. If we undercut that, then I really would expect to see uh, a test back here at this 28.85 area. That's kind of the next little zone, but uh, we'll have to cross that bridge when we get there. Overall, the buyers remain in charge. The trends are still up, so we need to respect that. For the S&P 500, 13.70 is still the magic number. I've noted this uh, Bin Laden top, this May 2nd high from last year, 2011. Uh, the, the news broke the night before and then we topped out there at 1370. We have yet to reclaim it until this past week and yet we're not really uh, able to get free and clear of it. In fact, on Friday we finished you know, about half a point here beneath that 1370. By the way, if you're not watching this on the full screen and the uh, 720p setting inside the player, go ahead and switch to that and uh, you'll definitely see higher quality. But 1370 is still the magic number for the S&P. So we've flirted with a push through that the last few days. 1378 was last week's high. Now we've also got this uptrend line, which is very close by. It's around 1364. So between 1364, 1370, 1378, we've kind of got uh, a, a couple of inflection points here to keep a close eye on in the days ahead uh, for the overall market. Now we've got this uptrend line here that goes all the way back to the October low. That's currently around 1300. So if we do start to see a trend line break and if we do happen to see some selling kick in, I would expect to see this 1300 or again this 1294 level get respected. So we'll have to again wait and see what happens. But S&P gave up about or it gained uh, four points last week. So really uh, minor upside on the heels of what's been a very impressive run for now 10 or 11 weeks. The Russell broke down pretty good last week. Uh, we had been in this range between 815 and 833 for going on a month. Okay, really right at a month. And uh, we broke through there on Wednesday. We briefly reclaimed it on Thursday and then we broke down again on Friday pretty good. So for the week, uh, this index gave up about 3%. And again, the small caps are really the, the, the speculative group of the bunch. And so when money is flowing out of the speculative stocks first, it's just another signal to us that we need to be very careful. So I noted this 800 level on Thursday night for subscribers at the stockbandit.com. We came down and tagged that number exactly on Friday, but it may not hold. That's just kind of the first line in the sand. Beneath that, we've now got this same area right here. We've got this uptrend line and this lateral line, which was so important last year, 772. 
kind of the next stop, and then, so there's definitely room for the Russell to head lower. And then finally is the Dow, which has held above this uh, May high from last year, 12,876. We cleared it a couple weeks ago, and we've held above it, but we have not really freed ourselves from it. So we've not got but about 100 points here before that level would be tested again. If we crack that 12,876, then this is going to be the next level to watch, 126 on the way down. So definitely stay on your toes out there. This rally has uh, definitely proven itself, and the bulls are still the ones in charge, but we've got to be careful out there. Stay selective. Shorten your time frames for new trades. Continue to favor the long side until we do see that character shift. But even when it happens, keep in mind that the bulls have been paid repeatedly going back into October to buy every dip. So the initial dip might be somewhat convincing, and it may stick. Who knows? But my point simply is be cautious out there and respect the fact that the trends are still up even though the pace of this rally is starting to slow. Thanks for joining me for this video. I will have more for you. Thanks for joining me for this video. I will have more for you soon. But in the meantime, trade like a bandit.